boxes and also yeah it looks fine all right uh, well first disclaimer these are my opinions and what we're going to do today is bosses and the four characters uh, all their cards <laughs> man I put a hefty amount into Slades of Spire so might as well make a tier list as a final goodbye because I don't have Xbox Game Pass anymore so yeah all right uh, now I might have picked the wrong one here that's actually dislikable uh, very uh, let's go with the annoying man annoying <laughs> me yeah thanks <laughs> there oh shoot there we go very very annoying just likable but a a little less slightly less dislikable than previous tiers anyways oh let's see here I'm trying to remember easily the time style I would say has been <laughs> the most annoying of the bunch especially when I was first starting out I don't know how many times I died by the time snail just because of a oh I played too many cards oh you did you did oh look you did don't get your setup because after 12 cards uh, uh, you didn't do enough damage oh you did oh look I just healed myself after time vortex thing because you didn't kill me in time oh look you're dead uh, so many times happened like that all right uh big bulky guy hmm he's very strong when he gets himself set up and very powerful when he gets all in up in your face with all the strength and stuff hey Ryan <laughs> what is this is a, a tier list for uh, Slay the Spire uh, the, the card game and these are all the bosses at the start <laughs> man I was kind of shocked actually that you didn't get the uh, gift sub from the lad earlier that got gave like six gift subs it was crazy <laughs> uh, how ar hard they are as you can see the top one is annoying <laughs> oh man yeah I need to do that but yeah um, anyways as I was saying the uh, <laughs> the knight the bulky knight uh, and this is all off of memory after three months or not basically three months but three months of experiment the experience <laughs> yes given bonus points for fun uh, <laughs> I actually probably had like I'm still gonna put him in annoying the heart I got into the heart five times in my career and yeah, he does a bunch of damage, but the major thing is his underlings, which I wish was on here. He, the underlings should be a part of this heart boss. I'm going to count the, the underlings as the heart boss. But, uh, ugh. you know what? what? You're kind of just all set up. If you can get to the heart and surpass the uh, mini guards and... Uh, one, you have like a ridiculous damage combo or you have enough bulk you're kind of set and they need to defeat the heart I beat the heart at least twice with two different characters so the heart is not a hundred percent difficult it's just the fact that you will get to the heart many times and the challenge to get to the heart is the hard part because you have to sacrifice getting tools so hmm really should he be A or he he just does a lot of damage, but it's mainly it's like back minions that do so much. Uh, for right now, I'll put him here. I'll re-debate that. These guys are pushovers. Uh, let's let's not say okay, but 
push. <laughs> Puss. <laughs> uh, push over tier. <laughs> push over. <laughs> Man. Because I did not, to my knowledge, lose to the guys once. Besides probably once with the knight or very closely lost. And the donut thing, they're cute and all. But this is the pushovers tier. Um, let's see here. Mm, I would say also another pushover is the knight lad. Like where he transforms into Thoron and stuff. Barely doing damage to you. He literally doesn't do much to you. And you most likely will do enough damage if you weren't. Like, not grabbing cards, because most of the time you're setting up your hand to do damage. So I hope you would have enough cards to do damage to him while he's like, Oh, I'm going to hit you with the big attack. And guess what? He's not, because he goes back into his shield form after you do a certain amount of damage. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, my reasoning for the uh, Rubik's Cube and the Donut Hole is the fact that there's so many cards in this game that you can do multiple damage to a wave of enemies or you can do so much damage to one of them and the other one doesn't get set up that's why I feel like they're pushovers <laughs> alright um let's uh do this do have to admit though uh the one time that I lost or almost lost to them was uh, because I was focusing on doing damage on both of them and still won out of it, so. <laughs> Alright, what was it? Uh, we got the reviving bird. Dear lord. I don't know how many times I've killed the bird and then the, on the second time it just utterly wrecked me. Or just ignoring... The fact that he had enemies at the start because if you let those guys set up and you're just doing damage to the big bird nothing you will just end your life it's just nothing oh also if you use challenge spells you, you get he gets buffed he gets more attack power over that hopefully the buffs that you did to yourself gives enough of an advantage or you just die afterwards even with all your armor that you've set up. I had a set with the uh, Iron Chad, and uh, where he, he kept getting armor every so often, uh, where he would do body shield. And to my knowledge, on that run, I didn't have it where you could keep the same armor, so that's probably the problem with that. But I got a bunch of armor with the uh, Anger card, and he still like did what? seven damage time seven one time and then he did more and then he did like 72 damage he just kept getting buffs because I was trying to buff myself and it just ended up in the hell zone all right uh slime boss I, I actually kind of lost against a couple of times uh they when they if you don't have any spread moves, you are done for. Man, if you didn't take care of them earlier and you just let a couple slide by because they split more and more. If you do not do a big enough damage, it, the little baby enemies just keep coming and it just... Uh, let's say... So, these guys are pushover, this guy is a pushover. Slime, uh, let's see here. What is it called? Uh, it's fine. It's the fine deer. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um, what was it? Yeah, the laser beam lad. If anything, he. Gosh. So he has two little drones that take away pro most likely your most valuable card. Somehow the AI in this game, they decide to take away the card of uh, 
whatever your setup is, they take the most fine, best card of your deck that is your synergy, and then your deck is almost ruined. Besides, when you kill them, you get the card back. So you might get an extra turn if you have like some type of energy synergy deck. Or it's like, oh, wow, you keep that card so I can kill it at a certain time. That's probably why I'm not putting an annoying tier, because you can use that to your advantage. The problem is, is that the other two droids, if you do not take care of them in a timely fashion, they buff the defense of the lad, the big major mecha looking thing. And then the mecha keeps buffing himself or giving armor to himself. So he keeps buffing and doing his thing. And he has artifacts where he d can't you can't lower his attack or defense uh, with a spe p specific card. So that does that's not an opportunity until you do it four times and that's just to weaken him once. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, he's already super massively buffed by the time I do that. Uh, let's see here. And, yeah. Which is funny to say because he's basically just a better version of the knight in a, basically all forms. <laughs> I think. Because you got the little mini enemies that buff. Uh, he has a mega hyper beam that he does literally uh, take a turn away from him. But he's doing way more damage than this lad. Oh, man. Ah, uh, let's see here. What was this? I'm trying to remember. And fire lead. He does a bunch of damage at the beginning. I think I only lost to him when I first tried to learn the game. So he might be a little bit higher than this Thoron guy, but... Besides, if you're being redundant and not getting any HP, which I probably had at the start of playing this game, you're not going to dive a, uh, that guy anytime soon afterwards. Uh, let's see here. And another minion based one. I'm trying to debate here. Hmm. I love killing the minions with the explosion type thing from our dagger lad. Uh, our dagger lad kind of, uh, like what is this called? A sheath? Or, anyways. Uh, when you kill one enemy, you can kill, do damage to the rest of the enemies type of thing. Uh, his minions are not as threatening as a guy a, uh, taking and defensing and chipping damage. He does constantly respawns them, but uh, like his major priority to is to respawn his enemy or his minions consistently. Uh. But man, I have had so many runs where I just mow him down instead. Or if I do mow down his minions, it's because I'm doing spread damage to everything. So he keeps tr constantly trying to do minions and it just doesn't work out for him <laughs> in the long run. Oh man. Okay. Ah. Now. Ah, let's see here. But yeah, uh, when it comes to concepts of uh, the, how they play, like as a boss, I really enjoy the f how dynamic uh, the snail can be. The snail, uh, you you gotta be on your toes. There's nothing to it. And this guy, you are so distracted from uh, the other two lads that he. Uh, Oh, automatically he already has his powers of every time you use a power he gets more powerful and he gets a second life that you can't do anything about so you have a turn most likely you're already set up by that point which I bet you can use that in your advantage but I didn't uh, that one turn that he's like oh I've been rich but I revived myself type jink and uh, uh, when it comes to the heart, the heart, uh, he does a boatload of damage. He gives you cards at the start of the game, which can be abused against him if you use a certain Iron Chad set, so not as big of a deal, I think. 
excuse me. Ugh. The major factor, I think, is uh, even if you have a godlike set at the start, you still have to go through his minions and then half of your HP is gone. I think that's the major reason why the heart can be annoying, but if you're t t c talking about isolating the heart by itself, the heart is not as threatening when you already have your setup. You got this far with all this thing, and then you mow down the minions? The, the, you're set. You already have something overpowered card-wise, which I can't wait to get to. Uh, but yeah, he's the final boss. He's the most satisfying thing. He's the reason why I kept playing this game. So, he, he belongs in the... Uh, very annoying, but cool. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look like that's gonna work like that. Ah, uh, that's, oh, oh. <laughs> that's the closest I'm gonna get there. <laughs> All right. Uh, yep. I think it's interesting. Uh, I. I give an extra tier to things that have minions, it seems like. See, the slime has more minions. Uh, those guys are pushovers. Those, the fact that I don't think they even heal each other is a pretty dangerous thing. They do armors each other up, but I think most of the time during my playthrough, I kind of just uh, broke through armor pretty quickly or ignored it and set up. Because they don't keep their armor when they do their thing. And then the slime. Somehow the weakening thing once in a while just utterly destroyed me. So that's why he's there. Uh, I think I'm happy with this. I like where I said it. And slime's just iconic. Alright. Uh, so what do we got here? Let's go... We're gonna go with the silence first, card-wise. All right, let's see here. Oh, uh, man. Easily. Uh, gosh, I can barely read it. It's so small, it's like the human small. But anyways. Uh, majorly, because I don't know how to say some of these cards. But anyways, I know. I'm just gonna be with me here. Uh, this card, obviously, you, you get an energy and draw two. It costs zero, so it's not like another uh, character's thing, which I'll get to. Uh, I think each character has something like this that have gain, but some of them actually cost uh, mana. So when you can draw two and gain energy, which I believe the upgrade, which sadly these won't show here. I'll, I'll try my best to remember as much as I can. I'm pretty sure you gain an extra energy and a draw three with this card. So you're being able to play more cards than you could imagine, and then you uh, already with this character's draw engine, you get way more opportunity to use different cards. Uh, additional damage with sheaves already. Uh, this actually this goes in. Ah, man. Like, if you're going to... I'm going to put it in A. The reason why I put a sheet of this in A, it only synergies with one deck. Oh, speaking of, discard, draw three. You can put that in any deck. It's a draw engine. Like, what else? Whenever you play a card, gain one block. When it comes to a character's ability to draw and have cards like this where you get energy and we'll get to the fact that we get a lot of different energy uses here. Ah, uh, your block is going to be fantastic. Alright. Tame two potions, exhaust. Ah, man. That just, potions can be cool. You get a potion every time, but... Ah, uh, during my time playing, potions... Mainly because I was being ignorant and not using as many as I should. It's going in here. 
All right, there you go. Potion Alchemist, you go in there. Ah, yes. Deal 10 damage to all enemies. Discard one random card. Uh -uh. Yeah, all out attack. This one I had a word buff, like I think it did 17 to all enemies. And then, did it decide to choose or was it 23? Either way, I, I had like strength or something. So I was doing multiple damage to multiple enemies. I also comboed it with um, that one poison one when the poison d it spreads all the damage out. And man, talk about those black slimy things. Yeah, you kill them, it's done. Uh, discard your hand. Uh, hmm, and you draw that many. The problem is with this card is that there's already a relic that does that. And I got that relic so many times during the game, especially with the silence. It was hilarious that I got so many times. So this is exactly like the relic, but it's at the start of the game instead of exhaust and whenever you want it in your hand. Uh, draw engine's always valuable, so I can't, I don't want to put it in C or D. But man, it's it's decent. It only can use it once in a while. All right, whenever you play a card, deal one damage to all enemies. Ah <laughs> uh, man. It takes two energy is the problem, I believe, with this card. It's a good combination with the sheaves, but again, it's taking more energy. Why won't you just have more accuracy ones dealing three more damage? Where, When they do stack, just having a bunch of those is way better power than j dealing one to all enemies type of thing. Like, you're doing so much more with the accurate when there's not a lot of enemies that, uh, where they're spread out. Don't get me wrong, they are, they do exist. But, when you're talking about sheaves, which you can constantly clone sheaves and stuff, and that's where you, you want to play this card the most, is the fact that you can clone so many sheaves and play so many cards. But... I feel like just having the accuracy would be better, or just getting more damage for your sheaves than just two energies, a card in your deck, uh, it's, it's the same power, but it's one damage for, to all enemies, it's like, ugh, if I'm just gonna do one damage, why can't I just do a bunch of others? Anyways, uh, gain, block, draw two cards, this one is decent. More draw engine, as you can see. I, I, I definitely prioritize draw engine over a lot of different stuff. Um, and obviously, like, that's pretty simple. You gain block, you draw. Uh, add two sheaves into your hand. You can upgrade this to three. And uh, with another card, I think it's like burst. This turn, your next uh, skill is played twice. Uh, Excuse me. I'll get back to that. Uh, we're already going to put that in S tier. Playing your skills twice is awesome. Especially when you're having sheaves or like this card. One that's exhaust. You can play two of those. And it's like, oh yes, please give me more. Anyways. Uh, back to the sheaves. It, it's basic. You just want more damage on your sheaves, and sheaves cost zero, and you just keep having that in your hand, and I believe the max is probably 10 or 12 cards in your hand, so keep doing that, keep doing it. Uh, let's see here. Gain 5 block. Block is not removed at the start of your next turn. Uh, yeah, gain block, do not remove. I feel like with the silence, I couldn't get this off. Couldn't really get it to work properly. Like, I. You just block for a turn, but mainly you just have so much energy and you're going so fast with setting up things. Is that. Uh, seven block black flip, I understand, because you kept drawing and blocking. But. 
yeah, you it's just for next turn. It's not for the entire game like some other characters. <laughs> So, one turn, you could be setting up block, and then the opponent not t attacking at all. And then, where did your good block go? It's gone. I think I only, I only had like two or three in the deck one time, but still, it's just, I don't get the cards in the right order sometimes. And it's like, well, I put this card in my deck, and the, the block is gone, and it doesn't even matter because the guy didn't even attack that turn. Uh, I have salt for that one. All right. Uh, this one's good with sheaves. It exhausts. It already innates. You get basic damage. Uh, when you ha already have like s some relics of strength, you can uh, just set up with this. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if someone out there uh, has a dedicated deck towards the backstab, where you have the relic where it's a 50-50% chance of having... Uh, the exhaust card, not exhaust, so you can just keep innating and playing, and just... Ah, so much jank can go with that card. And so it's a good backup attack, that... Uh, backup, by backup I mean just start off game lead attack. Alright, poison, we gotta get to poison. Poison cards. Alright, uh, poison. So this one's always good with poison, but... If you're not doing anything with poison, I'm going to put it here because poison is insane in this game. And, uh, and unlike in Pokemon, where Pokemon poison goes last, is the last thing after all the attacks are done. Poison damage goes first. At the end of your turn, they get poison damage, so you can just end the game with them taking poison damage instead of them attacking you. So... In a deal 7 damage if the enemy has poison, you just stack upon damage if they have poison, which I believe if you buff this, this can get a max to 20, which is great for like one energy attack attack. Uh, apply, three po uh, apply 3 poison to a random enemy 3 times. I am going to put this in B, bottom of B. I, it's good to set up poison, that's why you want Bane in any poison deck, is the fact that you just get 20 damage instantly. But, the problem is, is that, uh, it's random. If you're not focused on the boss and you randomly get their basic enemies, it's gone, it's over. Your, your poison stack damage, which we're, we'll get to in a minute, because it's gonna be great when you see this card. Oh my gosh, the effects that you can do with that card. The fact is it's not reliable and it costs so much energy when you got something like this, which I would say is the best poison card in the game. Besides the one that's coming up. Apply five poison. You can make it, I believe, apply seven or eight with a buff and you get to pick this to any of the enemies. Any of the enemies get to be picked. So you can focus it on the boss, which is very important. All right, what what is this? You cannot draw additional cards this turn. Reduce the cost of your all your cards in your hand to zero. Man, three energies. Uh, as you can see here, most of these cards are just ones and twos. But this one is a three at the moment, which... I'll, I'll definitely see in the bottom, but most of these energies are just ones and twos, so you're telling me... Oh, no, no, you can go in D. Uh, you cannot draw additional cards this turn, reduce all of your cards from all your... in your hand to zero. I just don't see the appeal. Because most of the time I think you're getting relics that you'll get energies from, right? And you already gain energy from this awesome card right here. And you rely on Draw Engine to get your zeros and one cards. But if you play three energies already, number one, you're not drawing much at all. Number two, uh, you, you, look, look at how I like playing. is the fact that we got Draw Engine everywhere. 
Oh man. Draw engine is good. Draw engine is life. <laughs> Alright. Uh anyways. Gain six block, add one sheave. This is great in the sheave deck. I'm pretty sure that most of these type sheave things are gonna go in like one tier specifically. <laughs> But we're not going to get our hand in. Whenever you play, uh, eh. whenever you are attacked, deal three damage back. This character does not like being attacked. But I did play this power and just kept stacking with its power. And I combined it with the backflip. And hmm, it was fun, but I didn't get very far with it. Uh, even though it was fun, I'm going to put it in C. This character cannot take the damage unlike some other characters in this game. I'm, I'm, he has the lowest HP out of the bunch. It is cool to gain Thoron whenever you want though. But, he, he's the lowest out of the bunch. Alright. Uh, that one just goes all the way up there. <laughs> Double the enemy's poison, exhaust. You can make it do tri du triple the enemy's poison with the buff. And you can have multiple of these cards. Yes, they exhaust, but if you have the relic that has a 50% chance, of course, that's flip a coin, don't get me wrong. But you're wanting more of those cards in your deck because you're putting deadly poison consistently. You're uh, most likely not using bouncing f flesh uh, flush or whatever for whatever reason I guess you did put it in your deck because you're me in being a dummy uh, and then you got Bane where you just add the poison on and do 20 damage each turn so basically if you put three deadly poisons on an opponent let's we're just hypothetical uh, you got gold on all of them you've upgraded all the deadly poison that's a total of 21 poison. Then you add uh, triple poison. That's 73 poison per turn. That's 70 damage per turn. Ah, oh, man. And then you are definitely using Bane for 20 damage per turn anyways. That's three energy right there if you're doing it like that. Oh, man. And that's not even counting relics and draw engine and a bunch of other stuff. Especially this one. You're, you're, you're just playing that one. So you have four energy at least one of the turns. Alright, anyways. Uh, let's see here. Deal 12 whenever you play a card the turn. The enemy loses three. Ugh, man, I tried. It's so hard to play this card. So hard. You use two energy. You're already down two, so you only play one more card. That's three damage. Let's say if you uh, have a sheaf deck, that's two of your energies going to that instead of boosting your sheave power or getting more sheaves in your hand. I've r m tried to use sheaves and choke synergy. It does not work. I don't know how many times I've tried. It never worked. Ugh. Man. The one good thing uh, memory I have about Choke is that I killed a little baby enemy on the side while it was a boss. I think it's the one that had a card that I needed because it stole it. one of the boss enemies. Stole one of my cards. So I had it Choke damage while I had a decent amount of sheaves in my hand. Anyways, too much energy for that. Discard three cards, gain energy. Oh, yes talk about awesome now we'll get to the part where these cards that you need to discard with which obviously you can see here we got discard we got discard three cards we got uh, oh, something around here got another discard somewhere anyways all right you got this one that discards anyways ah uh, the bread and butter of poison and you don't even need to have a poison deck to run this card correctly because apply six point poison whenever the enemy dies deal damage equal to its max HP to all enemies that's why the donut and the cube or the Rubik's cube 
is a pushover. There's cards like this in the game. And because there's cards like this in the game, they are nothing to you. Absolutely nothing. You're doing 250 damage to the other enemy. The Donald at all. Oh, man. Ugh. Such a good card. So good to have group enemies. And, uh... I don't think I ever did, but I bet if you got to the final heart part where it's just the two basic enemies, you're killing them both after you kill one. And that's so sweet. Alright. Apply four poison and two weak to all enemies. Exhaust. Once again, which, as you can see here, is uh, that that's the only card that's probably going to be S tier that costs two. We'll, we'll see once we go further down the line. Apply four poison, two weak to all enemies. This is fine. This is not great. It's fine. Uh, still better. See, they both cost two. But it's more consistent because it's all enemies. And you apply weak, so you're taking less damage. Damage four to all enemies. Ah, uh, man. Let's see here. Let's go throughout. Both of these cost the same, right? That Deal 4 damage to all enemies twice. So that's 8 damage. Deal 10 damage to all enemies, discard one card. And we'll get to a po the, the point why you want to discard. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can select a card or you can be really sneaky about it and play this as like the close second to last card. Uh... Not better than the... Uh, I'm going to put it better than the poison stuff, but not better than the discard handing thing. Because... Uh, even though this is more consistent, it's still not a lot of poison. Oh, wait, what? Well, my bad. Wait, apply three to random enemies three times. And then apply four poison to weak. I am actually discarding how good that card is. My bad. Uh, I'll probably re look. Gain 10 block, deal 10 damage. I think this is the best, uh, best block card he has. But I like black backflip better. Not only that, when you buff those two cards that are drawing two or three cards more, you're getting uh, opportunity to draw more in your engine than this card. You're not doing damage, but if you're gaining block, you're most likely running a deck that relies on Thoron, which I, I don't know why you're doing that, and, or Poison, which is top tier. <laughs> Uh, now I'm kind of re in rethinking about that card. But anyways. Uh, basic. Uh, gain for block cost zero, though. This is probably one of my favorite ways to gain block, actually. Definitely one of the favorite ways to gain block in this. Ah, uh, yes. Die, die, die. 13 damage to all enemies exhaust. This is basically this, but better in a lot of ways, and it gets rid of it in your hand. In fact, you're most likely playing it in the same deck. Not as good as game block draw two cards, but definitely one of my favorites. Add a random skill into your hand. It costs zero. It's a random factor. There's so many cards in this game. Um, I'll put it better than potions. Uh, gain four block next turn, gain four block. This only cost one. Has some decent synergy with that. But I've used it more. I'll put it there. Alright. Next turn, draw X card and gain X. This one I actually used quite a bit. Hmm. In fact, with synergy with this, why am I putting this card so low? You can use skills and double skills so much often. Yeah, there we go. Anyways, 
Next turn you draw, you get so much energy. You got so many cards in your hand to draw. It, it's great. Whenever you draw this card, add a copy into your hand, deal four damage. Never got to really get to set up. Whenever an attack deals unblocked damage, apply one poison. Whenever an attack deals unblocked damage. Ho oh, ho! This card? With the sheaves? Uh, hmm. I'm actually gonna put it next to this. It's not as uh, important as doubling the effect, but it is really good bonus to have. All right. Deal one damn. Oh, do, do, draw a card. If you draw a skill, gain three block. Ah, uh, decent draw engine. I've just used it as this. Like, hey, this is a freebie card, basically. It costs zero. You draw, and if it's a skill, you get three block. Yeah, it goes as close as the knight. They're innate. And cost one less for each card discarded this turn. Deal six damage times three. Which I believe if you upgrade it, it does another six damage, which is 24. This is perfectly great for discarding synergy, which we'll get to. But if you're doing discarding synergy, you get more energy and you get more draw. Which... You would love to do that with Poison and this card, or the Sheev deck, or literally anything else. <laughs> you do not have to rely on this card to get 24 damage when there's so many other options. Draw a card until you have 6 in your hand. This... costs 1 energy. I'll put it above the dice, but... Is basically a better or worse depending on who you ask. I love the dice. Ah, yes, the finisher. It's so good for poison, or not poison, but sheave decks. It's your finisher attack. What, what you, else do I gotta say about that? It's your finishing attack. It's the final blow. It's the ender of lives. It's the end all be all attack. Anyways, deal 4 damage for each skill in your hand. This is great with poison deck. You've got so many skills. That's the first card you play for poison. But if you're going for sheaves, you're already doing sheave damage. And you want to rely on getting sheaves as much as possible. Ah, yes. Deal 8. Next turn you gain. Oh, gosh, why? Why is there so many good energy cards? Oh, man. So good. I'm pretty sure I played that in any deck because you get an energy next turn, you're doing eight damage. It's fine when it comes to damage. Gain dexterity! Yes, please. With the character that has a hard time getting defense, which you can see that with the 10 damage stuff, you, you, you just get extra dexterity. It's power, it removes the card for the game, for the turn. It's great. Deal 8 damage twice, decrease the damage of this card by 2 this combat. Right. So it does 16 damage for 1 energy. There's better cards to choose than that. I think I played this card more than this card. I played this card, I just hate using this card. Ah, man, the cheekiness can only be played if there are no cards in your draw pile. Deal 50 damage to all enemies. <laughs> I tried using that, but I love the idea of the grand finale. I got to use it once during my whole time playing silence. I used it once and it was the most satisfying feeling to do. Man, one time I messed up and used a draw card before I could use it. Deal 5 damage. If the enemy has weak, gain energy and draw 1. You already get a card in this game that, uh, in the start of your turn, you gain that energy. So getting this 
card with it. And most likely, since you already have the card besides if you discarded it, I would say it's better than die. Most of the, nah, die. I've killed so many good enemies. Yeah, there we go. At the start of your turn, add a sheave into your hand. Yes, please. This is so good. This one, you can power it up and make it an innate, and you basically have sheaves for life. Every turn. Sheave. You got a sheave. Done. Makes even finisher look spook. But it only works in a sheave related deck. Unlike uh, this card that yeah I'm actually regretting putting that. It's not an S tier card but it's so good with the sheave deck especially with accuracy. Alright. Apply two weak, gain 11 block. This is actually... Nah, it took, takes two energy. If I'm going to apply two weak, I'm applying to all enemies block. And... Or not all enemies block, but... That's why Dexterity is so good. It makes most of his block cards awesome. But most of his block cards are not the best. In my opinion. Alright. Enemies lose X strength. Apply X weak exhaust. Uh, not enough memory on this card. Maybe I've just ignored it type of thing. But I won't give it the benefit of the doubt. Cost one additional for each time you lose. HP this combat deal 12 damage. It's zero. <sighs> this character's not losing much HP, but there's better cards like this one where it innates and exhausts type thing. And that every time you take damage, so you have a chance if you didn't make your deck small enough, which I don't most of the time. I like to uh I like to synergy. Alright, uh deal three apply weak. Definitely one of the best uh One of the best cards that you definitely start out with type of thing. You always get this card no matter what. And you apply one weak and so it synergizes a lot with uh, anything that has weak related stuff like this card over here. Okay, choose a card. Next turn, add three copies of that card. This card right here. <laughs> Man, I've used Nightmare to duplicate that and then use draw engine or something like this card to get that card literally the next turn. Or I meant uh, not next turn but use this to get energy and then hopefully have like something like this uh, previous turn to get energy and just use it freely. Oh man. If you have the like pyramid relic it's so good. All right. At the start of your turn, apply po two poison to all enemies. Ah, oh, this is a must to have poison wise. If you're running a poison deck, it is. It is a must. Like no. It not as good as triple because that is a have to. It is you're not playing a poison deck without doubling or tripling your opponent's poison. Next turn, gain energy. Uh, that will go... Like, see, this is discard three energy uh, cards and gain energy. But this, you have to wait a whole turn. It's still good, it's energy. And you can upgrade it to make it three. Next turn, your attacks deal devil damage. Ugh, man. Actually, I'm gonna put this in B. Uh, I... Uh, Ear attack, steal devil damage. Just how it is. Next turn, your attacks deal devil damage. The problem is, I see, is that most of the time it's. Nah, what am I doing with this? It's a, is it an A card? It takes two energy, and there's like more sheaves, and you probably already had something like this. That's permanent damage, deal three. It takes two energy is the only problem that I'm thinking about it. Alright. 
Ah, yes. The six damage, apply three. Like, this card plus this is terrific. Ah, oh, man. Hmm. Whenever an attack deals unblocked damage, apply poison. Yeah, that means that that applies four poison per turn, which is fun to do. Um, yep, yeah, nothing else more to say. All enemies lose six strength this turn. Just this turn, exhaust. I almost feel like it's like just a pocket waste at times, but it does save you once in a while, so I'll put it better than grand finale, but not anything higher. Deal 15 damage. Next turn, draw two additional cards. Next turn, draw two additional cards. What? What do you even mean by that? Do you see the card draw we have? We have gain energy draw. We have draw three, discard a card. We have, uh, we have next turn, draw of cards and gain energy with that. We have draw a card. If you draw a skill, gain block. And it only costs zero. Why am I doing two energy just to get two cards and 15 damage when I'm having sheaves and draw engine that's better, energy that's better, and then a finisher attack that will do mountains of damage if I used anything else. I need to use two attacks better than one attack that will have a promise of Two cards next turn, and not this turn. Still better than potions, though. <laughs> All right. Backpack. Oh, yes. Again, it it's great draw engine. You can draw two and discard two, I think, if the upgrade. Still, yeah, it costs zero, though, unlike this one. So they're evenly matched, I would say. Uh, eight damage, draw one. Oh. Mm. I think the only reason why I enjoy this more than this, or like this I mean, is the fact that it's next turn and 8 damage. Like, 8 damage fine is good synergy with this poison one. Ah, oh, I think I like this one more. You'll see why. Uh, you deal 9 damage, which is one more. But you also get to discard, which I will show you. There we go. We're getting to the good stuff. When you are running a discard deck, which, as you can see here, most of your deck... Like, there's a lot of cards that draw and discard at the same time. So you're running these cards most of the time, which I'm going to put this up here. If you... If this card is discarded from your hand, draw one card, which is awesome, because there's relics that synergy with discard, and I believe. Gosh, it's been a while since I've seen some relics. Anyways, oh, no, 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 no. That's the reason why you love discard so much. All right, get up there. Get up. Deal 10 damage. If you discarded a card in this turn, you gain energy. So good. So good. And you see so many discarding options. So good. Alright. Five damage. Zero card. Quite pathetic compared to the rest of them. Like, shoot. When you have the sheave set up, it's way better to have than... Oh, yay. Yeah, slice. Zero. Deal three damage five times. Man. With strength up, or getting strength buffs, which I don't see much here, I saw the dexterity stuff. Like, you would have to get lucky with something like an item to buff your strength, because I see a lot of, uh, d doing a lot of de-strengthing, or like, not strengthening the enemy type of thing. So, I tried playing this card. I would say the slice is actually better than that, because you can constantly do stuff. Put a card from your hand hand on top of your draw pile it costs zero until played i don't think i've ever actually played that card so that's going here ha 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 okay 
rule number one do not uh play this card with finisher because finisher likes his energy and likes playing cards i did try to play with it and probably worked a little bit but man it goes really good with discard three cards that like have these in it which where's that card bingo so good I love these cards. I love the fact that I can discard cards and get bonus effects. Oh, man. Uh. <clears throat> Anyways, if you have a bunch of these cards and this card, you're gaining so much energy. So that means screwer screws over enemies. <laughs> discard your hand. Add one uh, sheave into your hand for each card discarded. This is one of the best sheave cards you could ever ask for, but still playing a skill is way better. Uh, what am I doing putting that card all the way up here? Like, it's really good with synergy with this, no doubt. Yeah, six damage. Yeah, they're basic. This one is good, definitely. One of the better cards. You know what? I'm actually going to say that this card's better than this one. Better than uh, Deflect because discarding and gaining 8 is very valuable when you value these cards so much. Apply 7 damage weak. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like it's actually weaker than the other card where it's three damage it costs zero and you get one week now if it was apply two week which i bet you can upgrade it to do yeah but it's still a cost cost of energy and there's so many things in this game that you can minus their strength or give them buffs ah uh, yes the eternal suffering it only takes one energy it does exhaust but your opponent is forever in trouble uh, it doesn't synergize well with poison, but it does synergize well with the innate cards and stuff. Get it first turn. At the start of your turn, draw a card and discard. Ah, this is a great power. Especially if you're running the discard, I'm going to put them next to the discard stuff. It's self-explanatory. You draw, you discard. D deal 14 damage, discard all non-attacking cards into your hand. Again, uh, very good with the uh, discarding here. I got a lot of mess. I think I need to reorganize. We'll, we'll get there. At the end of your turn, retain up to one card. I'll put this in A. I've retained a couple of cards and saved my butt. Gain two at the end of your turn, lose dexterity. If it didn't cost three energy, you basically waste a turn if you didn't set up correctly. You waste a turn just to be invincible for one more turn. But it's still better than slice. All right, uh, let's let's reorganize. Clearly, I have a lot of cards that I like here. Uh, this one I'm rethinking is B. Actually, deal four damage. For, I've actually used that worse. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, with the discarding stuff, you can always play it in any deck. Because look how many draw engine discard type stuff you have in this. Alright. So we got that. Um, I'll put it better than poison, it's draw engine. Uh, skill, that, apply vulnerability. You know what? I'll I'll put it better than the sheave stuff, but it's not there. All right. What else we got? Didn't use choke. I hate it. All right. If only I could zoom out and make this better or something. Looking. I think I got my perfect silence deck. You, you give me a moment. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I love how I put this card over here 
so high because I enjoy the energy consumption so much. And you're comboing this for this finisher is obviously there, but you also got like the double skill attack that is so good. You got the gain energy draw that costs zero, by the way. Hmm. Yep. I'm here. I think I'm satisfied with this. Looks good. Man. It looks good. Looks good. All right. Interesting how I there are some garbage legendaries like that one for sure. I'm actually. Hmm. Not as worse as that, but. Nah, it's not as worse as choke. Choke is hell. But yeah, there we go. That looks better. All right. So this is the Slay the Spire Silent card tier list. I already did the bosses. And here we go. Here's one more good look. Boop, bloop, 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 bloop. And there you go. There's the good look. All right. Iron Chad. Here we go. Anger. Anger, A for anger, angry, makes a copy of itself, does six damage. You can do some crazy stuff with that. Game fire block, if you upgrade this card, you upgrade basically your whole deck at that point. You do not need to upgrade any other card besides a card that we're going to get to. You don't need to do anything else after that. You gain block, you can actually upgrade itself if you added another card and didn't upgrade it. Forever block, if you upgrade this card, it only costs two, so it's not as big of a hindrance. For the rest of the game, or like turn of the combat, you can get block, and you stack it, and it's awesome. I beat the heart with this. It is great. I will get to my favorite blocking soon. Apply to vulnerability, it's basic. It's like, oh, yep, bonk on the head. You do some more damage for two turns. It's a good starting card. I'm glad it's not useless. Uh, draw engine, I'll put it in A. The biggest drawback is that you don't draw any more after that turn. Berserk, you gain energy, like one more energy after that, but you have to deal with three turns of vulnerability and if you do not run a defensive uh, thing like a defensive character you are done for it is over game over to you nothing is left to be said blood for blood is actually one of the best attacking cards in this game why it's because you got cards like this lose three energy gain Costs one less for each time your less HP is, or you lose HP this combat. Uh, we'll get to the fact that we got uh, more cards, but we'll get to why that's such a good card. 32 damage. Uh, this is perfectly fine for the start. Uh, I would say it's actually worse than most damaging cards he has because it takes so much energy and resources one of the best attacking cards in the game period uh you definitely want to upgrade this thing even if you do upgrade that card the the blocking one you don't even have to run it with this it's just preferred if you run it with this because you keep your block but I've run it, I've run it <laughs> with a card that like does seven damage, you gain seven block, and then you just throw body slam in there for more damage. Uh, great draw engine. You do one damage, you draw a card for each turn. It makes your draw five to draw six for the rest of the game. And it's perfect synergy with blood for blood, which when you upgrade it you do 24 damage and that would be for zero energy hand if you did it right so let's say you started this you didn't get this card for two turns 
and then you did this, that would be one energy. So that made that car free for the turn for, for 24 damage. The reason why I say that Blood for Blood is one of the best attacking cards is the fact that it costs one, one of the best, not, not as good as Body Slam. But it's the fact that you gain strength with most relics that you can find with this character, I think. Most of the time I got really lucky with strength building stuff and blood for blood. It was one of the funnest attacks just to throw out. All right, what is this? Uh, exhaust one card, draw two. Definitely a decent way of uh, using the exhaust power where you do damage to all enemies. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, but I don't think it's S tier. All right. Uh, it costs two, and you can do like 28 damage if you buff it. But if you don't use it that turn, it's gone forever. Clash, one of my favorite cards. I did a whole thing, like a whole run dedicated to Clash, and then the heart utterly destroyed me because he added cards in his deck. In my deck, I mean. So, it's horrible when you're versing enemies that uh, give cards in your deck and you weren't prepared for it. Deal 8 damage to all enemies. It's, I would actually say, really good with another card that's coming up. Apply 12 damage, apply to weak. The problem with that card is the fact that he has another card that's just way better in every way. You'll, we'll get to that. Combust! Another power that is awesome. Deals damage to himself, but deals five. And then it's really good synergy with blood for blood. Ah, yes. Corrupt. I remember using you. Uh, not better than anger. Skills cost zero, but you exhaust. Uh, and then... With this card, whenever a card is exhaust, draw. Uh, good synergy with that card. You, For some decks you want to, because with the Clash deck that I made, you want to exhaust all your skills and stuff, get those out of there. And then you have all your power cards. Everything's fine and dandy after that point. Defense is basic. This made me won the game on the heart boss. In fact, I shouldn't uh, put it that lightly. Demon form with uh, extra buff. You can make it three strength per turn. You keep constantly getting strength. And if you have another card that I can't wait to get to, it's gonna be great. I'll talk about it later. Lo enemy loses two strength, exhaust. Uh, like I forgot if it was like for the entire game or not. I think it's a bit better than weak because strength. So, so yeah. The next turn, your next tech is played twice. Is always a decent thought, but it does take one energy, so you can't play something like this if you're talking about a basic energy deck without like taking some damage and stuff. All right, uh, I tried doing that uh, for some reason. Drop kick whenever I got the, my opponent vulnerable. Uh, vulnerable just goes away too quickly. Just don't have enough time without having 99 like that other character the silence had a 99 one but if if the silence had something like this it would be way higher but yeah it was just a thing that was in my deck that just was oh yeah you got free five damage and maybe a draw but that's five damage and a draw when there's so many other energy based things let's say if he wasn't vulnerable it's over Dual blade, <clears throat> definitely one of the things, you can actually double power cards, like the, the demon form, you can get more demon form than you have the right to have. You can make uh, three of the same copy of that card. Uh, 
you can make a copy of uh, more body slam if you want way more damage. You had more blood born. You, you can get more the combustion. In fact, it, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's too good. Uh, not as good as upgrading all your cards. But yeah, dual wheel. Really good. I'm going to put this in A. You do not have to run it in your deck. Even if you're running a body slam, you do not have to have it. You, you don't. It's really good when you do are running a super blocky deck. In fact, that's what saved me in a run. I'm pretty sure that's the reason why I uh, won. But it wasn't the major reason why I had that all that block in the beginning. It's not the reason why it was stacking. It still takes two energy. And if you want to do damage already, you're probably like duplicating more powerful stuff. And more energy for that. And you don't keep it afterwards if you don't have this. So it heavily relies on this to be super amazing. <clears throat> Alright. Evolve. Whenever you draw a status card, draw one. It's draw engine, but man, is there better draw engine like brutal. <laughs> uh, there's just more draw engine than that. Alright. Put a card from your exhaust pile into your hand. This was one of my favorites to use, especially with a card that's coming up. You can do some really cool synergy with it. Feed. I will put it less than Clash. When you get this thing to set up, it is good. When you do not get this thing to set up and you're not killing anything with it, you're doing less damage than you should because you're running Clash or some other stronger attack because this character loves attacking for powerful damage. Or you're wasting your time trying to get the opponent at a specific low energy, might even wait for feed, and then die because you just wanted four to three more extra HP for your max HP. Whenever a card is exhaust, gain three block. Ugh, man. This card. Feel no pain? With this is awesome. Why is it awesome? It's because whenever your opponent, like the heart, gives you cards that exhaust after that turn, you get to gain three block per. Now, you can buff it and I believe make it six. And then if you dual wield it, you make it 12. So every time you were exhausting cards, you were gaining 12 block. I'm actually thinking that belongs higher. <laughs> Man, talk about the block engine. Oh, great. And then you double for the final thing, you double your block with it. You have astronomical block. And then with body slam, you do astronomical damage. The end. All right. Deal, uh, exhaust all your cards in your hand. Deal seven, each card exhausted. I don't know if I won with this card or just had a really fun time, but it was a good combination with feel no pain. You get a bunch of block, you double your block later. It was, it was a good attacking card. I am not going to lie. At the end of your turn, deal one damage to all enemies for each attack played this turn. Wait, what? At the end of your turn, deal one damage to all enemies for each attack played this turn. Is that what that card did? Hmm. By their breath. Every time you played attack damage? Hmm. I thought it was exhaust. Hmm. I thought it was the exhaust card that did that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I tried playing that card. Every time I played an attack, I like stacked three of them and it was like three damage. Hmm. Ah, too much. 
not enough memory on that card. One of the best blocking cards that it was ever conceived, especially when we're talking about uh, damaging those birds. They hit five times. Let's say if you buffed it to six damage, they're taking six damage every time they hit five times whatever HP. Most likely, I think they had like 34. They're most likely dead in one or two turns. It's great. And you didn't have to do anything but put a shield up. <laughs> Alright, uh, Strength Flex. It, it's decent with demon form, but it's only really useful with heavy blade. Ah, oh, man. You always have to use this card, but it's one a energy and you can make it do massive amount of block and that's going to be great with body slam and a bunch of other things you could also duplicate it and try to use more than one or exhaust or duplicate it and then have it exhaust for a reason to gain 12 block for free where you don't have to use it at all as energy and it's great all right what else did i have i think i put a card here randomly play the top card of your draw pile and exhaust it good draw en engine but it's random you could draw something like this and just do 32 damage for the turn but the problem is is the fact that you're going to miss out on that card later on in the game unlike this card where headbutt you deal nine, put a card from your discard pile on top of your draw pile. And if you have any draw engine whatsoever, or a relic that gets those cards back, epic. You have that card for next or this turn. Basically a free card that you wanted that you couldn't play previously. Or just want to play it again. Heavy Blade... Uh, it's affected very heavily by strength, but if you're gaining strength and you have something like body slam that's zero and you're gaining block, already uh, the damage could be free with body slam or damage could be free with blood strength and strength is already adding it up. The only thing I could think of is the fact that you would want to play this card as a dedicated thing. That's what you've dedicated around. So, demon form is just good in general on anything. Really, it's just free strength. Ah, uh, it it's good with flex. It's it's gonna be in B. Lose three, deal fourteen damage. Fourteen damage is not enough for losing three HP. Unlike, let's say. 5 damage to all enemies. It's just way better. You don't want to lose too much HP. And if I'm going to lose 3 HP, it's going to be an energy that affords me to do something huge, like 32 damage. Or doing 21 damage to all enemies and add a burn card that hopefully will find the card soon, sooner or later that shows the one where you have more status cards. Anyways. Gain 30 block, exhaust. This actually saved a run. So, easy. But it's, of course, a legendary card. At, add a random attack into your hand. It costs zero this turn. Ugh. It's too random to deal with. It goes to C. Spam. Get out of here. Alright. Uh, gain strength. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's basically the same performance as Doom. It's gain strength, you get more damage. You know the drill. Fly one week, exhaust the card. <laughs> if you're already having block, why are you dealing with weak? It only applies one week to all enemies. Mm. Yeah. Okay, one of my favorite ways to gain block. You deal 5 damage, you can gain 7 block, and it combos nicely with Body Slam. Uh, whenever you gain block, Judgment. I've tried to play this correctly. If you're going to play something, Demon Form every turn would be better. Uh, judgment, 
relies on getting lots of block consistently, which you can do five damage more. But imagine after multiple turns, you can gain more strength damage. I'm pretty sure strength like multiplies the effect of deal damage equal in your block or something like that. Or I did something crazy. I'm trying to remember that part. Either way, there's better ways to deal damage with Juggernaut block-wise. Oh wait, or is that how I won? Hmm. Just in case, I'm gonna put it around here. It's still a good guard, don't get me wrong. But, doubling my strength was way better <laughs> with demon form. Oh man, talk about a loadout. And, oh, okay, here, here's how I won, actually. How, my cards that I won here. At the end of your turn, gain three block. Hmm, I wonder how that's going to be broken, hmm? All right, so. You dual wield, or you already had all your cards upgraded by this card or something of that sort. Anyways, you dual wield, you dual wield this. The card's already upgraded. That's six for the next turn. You already have this, so every turn afterwards, you have that same block. You are consistently getting more and more block for every turn that you exist on the planet. It is great. I love it. Oh, man. Offering... Sometimes you gotta offer your soul to get more draw engine and more energy. You Sadly, when you upgrade this card, you don't get another break of, like, get more energy for it. But you draw five cards. Five cards. That is too much. And... If you draw that five cards, you have two of these in the deck, you exhaust it, and then you draw this out of the ten cards that you drawed. I know you're doing like 12 damage to yourself. You can play it again and do 18 damage to yourself. And you draw 15 cards this turn. You've gained four energy for the turn. You most likely have something like, uh, where is it? Where did it go? Uh, lose HP, gain energy. And you're just... Powering yourself up in so many different ways. Best draw engine ever conceived by a man. Perfect strike. Ugh, man. This is how I won the heart. I had perfect strike. I had so many strike cards. I had strength. I had the ability to gain and dual wield. You can... You know what? Dual wield deserves higher. Way higher. There we go. Perfect strike... If you have strike cards, it is one of the best attacking cards. Not as good as Body Slam, don't get me wrong. When you have Body Slam, that's a free whatever damage of block you have. Plus your strength over here. So I'm not going to put it outrageously high, but it's good synergy. Uh, perfect Strike. Ah, is just good. Oh, and you can duplicate Perfect Strike with Dual Wield. That's why Dual Wield is so great. You can... Uh, duplicate uh, powers and uh, skills. Ah, so yeah, uh, what? Wait, was it skills? No, just power cards. Anyways, either way, uh, I didn't mean to say dual wield can duplicate offering. I meant you could ex get two of those with that card. The, the, the floating hand that's trying to find some toilet paper. Alright. Add two wounded, gain 15 block. Uh, also another card that I really enjoyed getting more block with. Uh, deal two damage four times. It only costs one, but exhausts. It's decent. It's not as good as this, but it's, mm, it's not better than that either. When you play an attack, gain three block. Uh, yeah. Better than feed. Better than a lot of things to gain block. Not better than Iron Wave. It's good synergy with Iron Wave, but man, Iron Wave, you can just use it attacking. Yeah. 
Rampage takes way too long to set up. You have to dedicate and make your deck all about it. All the time. Reaper! Discard with offering for the turn. You just healed all of your damage that you have taken for throughout the game from using offering. Great synergy with that. Deal 7, shuffle a into your draw pile. I don't think I've even used that card before. Deal 7, shuffle a death into your draw pile. I bet it was good somewhere. At the end of your turn, an enemy for each attack played this turn. Yeah, that's not the card I'm thinking of. Whenever you lose that XP, you gain strength. Ah, yes. As you can see here, I don't mind taking damage at all. So, when you lose HP from a card, which is 1, 2, Ah, uh, where's the third? Three. Three cards that do that. Oh, four. Four cards that can do that. You just gained four strength for the turn. Or, like, period. So it's very close to this. I love how the animations or, like, the card lookalikes are so close to each other that, yeah, they're good. Ah, uh, yeah, nope. We're not done yet. Okay. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm going to just say it's one of the best upgrades. B. It's B. It's not as good as Perfect Strike, even though you can upgrade it. Actually, that card is the best for the end game of where you enjoy playing this game so much you play it religiously. You can make this card infinitely infinite power. So I'm not going to say it's bad. So it's middle of the road. Uh, even when I got to like the third final boss whatever and upgraded it I think I got to a max of like 46 damage which is not bad for two energy that's way better than uh, this card over here that's three that's 32 which I think does an extra 10 if you upgrade it but still you infinitely upgrade this one exhaust all your uh, non-attacking cards. Another card that exhausts. I'm pretty sure there was another card over here that exhausts things. And you gain block. I'm pretty sure I did do this during my final battle or something close to that. So I'm gonna put it in A. It's better than Juggernaut. Well, Juggernaut kind of just gets around. Gain and exhaust. Again, very good synergy with that. It, it exhausts, exhausts. You can play around with this one. You gain energy. Energy with the, this guy is awesome. Draw engine is probably the most thing he looks like he's lacking. So that's why offering is all the way up there. Gain five. If this card is exhausted, gain energy instead. It's basically a block until it gets exhausted. <laughs> So I'll put it in A. It's very situational. You need to exhaust your cards. Uh, exhaust all non-attacking cards. 16 damage. I've used this once in a while. But man, if you're already exhausting, you're exhausting it for block with this card. Or you're doing it with something else. You don't care about 16 damage. What you care about is keeping yourself alive with all that HP. Fly uh, three weak and vulnerable to all enemies. Exhaust. This one I'll put better than Clash because I have yet used it. For three turns, it's worth. It's worth. You get to do extra damage by 25% and 25% of their damage is not going to do much. Gain eight block draw card. Here's more draw engine. He actually gets both draw and block, which is very similar to this, but better. So that's why I put it above. If the enemy attack gains strength, there's so many other things to gain strength on, and it's permanent, and you don't have to uh, rely on your opponent to attack. I've learned that actually I've... Mm. It's better than Berserk. Berserk was hell to use, but you have to rely on your opponent to attack. And, there, and when I played, uh, there was so many other better ways to gain strength. Like, just straight up playing that card. 
and this cost of energy and if you wanted to keep using it you would have to constantly play it unlike this one where once you played it you get strength for eternity and you gain three strength per turn all right strike card you know it's basic deal three to a random three enemies I would say it's worse than doing three damage to yourself for 14 damage uh, deal three to three random enemies three times to a random enemy three times it's only nine damage <clears throat> it's only nine damage all right um thunderclap we got where is that spread move one of these were the spread I'm pretty sure in my opinion spread moves are very similar to each other in fact they're a great synergy together than without each other so yeah both of these very similar in fact I'll, I'll say I've played Thunderclap in other decks than Cleave alright gain 7 exhausted guard actually this has ruined runs for me here's the one of the best ways to get your opponent weak vulnerable and doing 18 damage I think if you a buffed this card is actually one of the best B cards. It's the best way to vulnerability your opponent. It's the best way to weaken your opponent. It is the, just that. It's, oh, and it gets rid of artifact. If you use this card twice, your opponent will finally have an artifact on it. Okay, that's why I put it like that. Only problem is that you gotta upgrade this card, or it's not as useful as it should be. All right, I feel like this is a mistranslation, or I'm reading it wrong. I remember Fire Breath being something towards exhaustion. There was a card in here that every time you exhaust a card, it would do damage to the opponent, or draw a status card to do damage. So I'm wondering if I'm right about that. Uh, I'll hope I remember. Anyways, uh, strike cards, very important for the strike deck, but it's better than this strike. But there are other cards like the Thunderclap that does vulnerability. Um, vulner. Yeah, I'll put it here. It's better than relying on strength, I would say. In fact, you can play flex on anything, so yeah. <clears throat> Draw one card, put a card from your hand into the top of your draw pile. This, this card has been very fun to use. But sometimes you just exhaust it anyways, or you just keep playing it just to play it. All right, uh, Whirlwind, I like it. it if whatever energies you have, you can make it go crazy, but and then 12 damage. It is a strike, so it goes great with the perfect strike, which is obviously one of the best. No wonder I had uh, such a hard time actually trying to win with this character. Just so many good cards that you have to narrow it down. <laughs> oh man. But then you have cards like this, deal three damage to yourself, and you don't get any like, oh, you, you like three damage? What do you mean that I'm doing 3 damage to myself? What? For 14 damage? When I could be doing so much more. <laughs> like dual wheel where I duplicate cards. Like, excuse me. That's a sin. Upon nature. Anyways, here's a good look. This is, uh... Ah, uh, Slay the Spire, ranking the Iron Chad. Ch Chaladin. I'm, like I said, I only call him the Iron Chad. Alright. Here's my tier list. I don't think I'm gonna have to go back. I, I do think that Fire Breath, if they changed it, I think was better. I, I don't remember what spell, like you exhaust a card and do it. I think they did change it. I don't know, maybe this is the older card list, but we'll see. All right, where is he? Oh, yes. The defect, oh yeah. All right, uh, let's see here. Gain energy for every six cards in your draw pile. I know people like making their decks small. 
but I like making my deck big. And making my deck big was actually worth it when you have a card like this. And it was hilariously fun to do that. All for one. Mm, so good. It gets your card back to the cost zero. Amplify. And it also deals extra 10 damage. This turn, your next power card is played twice. I think I tried using that, but it is good nonetheless. You can get like 16 health with a wrench. If you have no block, gain 11 block. Very situational. He has better ways of getting block. Uh, like, in fact, I remember having some relics that would stop me from playing that card because I would have... The first turn, I would have 12 block. The second turn, I would have 13 block. In the th uh, third turn, I would have 8 block because all three of those relics in one go. Channeling lightning is always good. Dealing 4 damage for each orb, mm, I think you can do 16 with that, has always been good. Apply vulnerability, it's always good with all for one. But, as it's a card for loan, it does 3, and if you don't have a lot of these, it can be kind of pathetic. Ah, uh, yes. Old Faithful. Gain four focus. At the end of your turn, you lose focus. For the rest of the combat. It's such a gambit tool. But it's my favorite gambit tool. Blaze, I never got to really use the frost channel type thing. Where I could just have a bunch of stacks where I'm just blizzarding my opponent. Anyways. An eight game block. Definitely the best block card. Uh, no, 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 no. There's better block cards, but uh, I'll put it here. You, Nate, gain, gain team block. Prevent the next turn time you would lose HP. This has always been fun. In fact, uh, it's a close second to gain focus. This just does way too much damage. You can get that right. Eight damage lock on. I tried, tried using that. It's like, ah, I just wasted energy when I could have just got more orb slots or something of that sort. More orb slots is always good. Channel random orb. Hmm. The problem is, is it's random. The random nature of it. Can't rely on it. Gain seven block next turn. Gain energy. This was really good. With uh, the one snail boss. Channel Frost. It's a zero card. I'm pretty sure most of the zero cards are going to be in B. But if you have all these in a deck with all for one, it's great. Mm, I would act, Yeah, Claw would probably be one of the worst zero cards. When it, it can do a lot of damage in the long run if you dedicate to zero. But I don't like dedicating to only zero. I want some more energy and fun. Alright, gain two focus, lose an orb slot. This is awesome. So you're gaining orb slots, you're losing orb slots, you're gaining orb slots, then you're losing orb slots. And then you're just gaining more damage and focus, and then all of a sudden you just want to, hey, I want to do a lot of damage right now. Boom. Then you go, and you do your thing. Channeling Frost, ah, uh, yeah. I think I, uh, like channeling energy and frost and lightning more than the zero cards personally deal seven draw one for each unique orb i tried using that it felt like a wasted turn most of the time channel frost draw a card now this on the other hand yes please i draw and do stuff deal 11 damage gain an artifact exhaust why waste your legendary pick on that you deal 11 when, uh, first of all, look at all these other cards with one energy that you could be using instead of that. <clears throat> Maybe a decent bonus. At the start of your turn, add a random power card in your hand. I'll say it's better than that. Mm, better than the chaos random. If I'm going to do random and just wanting to have a bunch of fun, I guess that will be the case. <clears throat> Channel one dark. I think Dark is actually one of the weakest out of the bunch. 
Yeah, I tried doing that. Dark never worked out for me. But I'd rather channel it. Yeah, I put it in C. This is the worst one of the bunch. Okay, pretty basic. Gain focus, obviously one of the best. If not the best. Gain focus ability. Or, no, I'll, I'll put it up there. Or Nah, nah, it's actually better because you can buff it. You don't lose the orb slot either. <clears throat> Deal 10 damage to all enemies, channel dark. Again, it's just something about dark. It takes too long for dark to set up. Double energy exhaust. This is obviously just good in general. I'm actually thinking it's better than... Uh, okay, it's not the best, but we'll see. I think you gain this automatically. You evoke it, and that's pretty fun to do once in a while. <clears throat> yeah, I'll put that in solid B. Uh, the first card you play each turn is played twice. Ah, yes. I've actually used that, quite surprisingly. I'll put it in B. Not above the th three, because you hope that you get a certain card and you get to play it twice. It can be crazy like that. Ah, yes. Channeling lightning. Channel lightning hits all enemies. Channel two lightning. It's the best lightning card you can get. It truly is. Okay. Gain 13 block. Retain your hand. Uh, certain relics just beat out this though. But it's a better way to gain block. Mm. But not as good as this. So I'm going to put it down here. Revoke all your orbs. Gain and draw for each. That's a suicide run. But... It's a zero card, so you belong here. <laughs> this becomes a zero card block that is truly amazing. It first costs four, but if you make it zero and you do all for one, you can get easily 24 block. And if you have more than one of the force fields, you can get 48 block and it just stacks and it's awesome. Another card that costs zero. Uh, channel plasma. Okay, this one. More detail on this one. DL5. If you have played less than three cards this turn, draw one card. It's decent draw engine. I would say not the best of the bunch, but better than claw. Claw takes so long. You have to dedicate a claw deck for it. Alright, channel plasma. It takes two fusion, two energy for one plasma. In fact, I think that might be worse than darkness. Alright. Ah, oh, man. Gain one block permanently, increase this card's block exhaust. Solid B. It was fun to use once in a while when you got it. Gain seven, channel two. That is better than six damage, I think, because you get a channel two frost, you gain block, and you gain more block, which I think is four, besides if you gain focus, which is astronomical amount of block. Okay, another zero card. Deal three if the intends to apply weak. Oh, okay, intends to attack. Relies on your opponent to do something. Mm -mm. Whenever you play a power card, draw a card. Well, Let's see here. How many power cards we got? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're playing power cards. You get to draw more and it just sets up. At the start of your turn, add a random... Ah, oh man. Random cards. I do not like in this game how unpredictable it can be. It's with so many different options for random cards. Uh... Yes, this is one of the best cards. Uh, gain three block, retain a card from your discard pile to your hand. You basically get a card back. It does exhaust, but you can get something like, uh, let's say if you didn't get to play the uh, double energy, you get that. Or we'll get to the other cards that make that card even more broken than it should. Uh... Gosh, you lose 3 focus, which is huge, but you're doing like 26 damage, which is also huge. So, I'm not going to say it's better than invoking, but I will say that it's better than anything down here. <clears throat> Gain 9 block, 
leaf it's cheap it's not as good as that but it's cheap at the start of your turn trigger the passive ability of your next orb this was hilariously fun to use loop it's pretty dope loop banks your next or your first orb just constantly do stuff at the start of your turn draw additional card good draw engine uh, it's almost like I like a lot of powers up here, and that's why this card is up here because I like all the powers Remove all your block from the enemy deal 10 damage. Oh, yeah Removing the enemy's block is fun Media strike uh, This this is what I'm talking about plasma. I know it costs five, but if you see here you got double energy you also got next get turn gain energy. You're not ha going to have trouble gaining energy with this character. So, I'm going to put it in the middle of everything. Because you get even more energy if you can pull it off. You did 24 damage, it's fine. Evoke your next door X times. <sighs> it's not as good as another objectively good attack. Which I can't wait to show. But it's not garbage either. I'll... I'll place it better than the fo gain lose focus because this character loves to do the focus type stuff. Besides, if you dedicate it not to, this is one of the best draw engines in the entire game. Gosh, I would put it in the top three because you draw, add a burn card in your draw file, and then you use all for one and you draw again. And then if you draw another all for one, you draw again. And you draw four, you keep going and going and it just keeps going. What more do you want with that card? All right, channel one lightning, uh, frost and dark exhausts, ah, man. You know what, I'm gonna say it. I don't like it. Don't like the rainbow. Taste the rainbow? I'm not tasting that rainbow. Mm -mm. I'd rather reboot. Exhaust and reboot and draw four. Because that will be at least a zero card and I can get it back with all for one. Also, all for one sounds like an awesome TV show. Deal nine ricochet. This card right here. Uh, gives me the ability to, let's say, get that card again, or uh, get literally any card again, like, uh, not the power, uh, the skill, like the consume one. Rebound's really good. Evoke your next orb and get it. It's a lot weaker than that one up there, where you just evoke it, then play it twice. But... It's a lot better than just like, oh, here's here's a random three. Hope you have a bunch of focus after you use two energy. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways. Recycle, exhaust a card, gain equal to it. The only time that I got to really use that, if I had the Meteor Strike. And I have to get lucky to get Meteor Strike when there's so many other better uh, legendary cards. Why do I need to pick Meteor Strike all the time? Okay, gain seven block times the amount. Uh, with so much energy, and he already has so many cards that do so much damage, why do that when you have something like this, which can cost zero, and you're doing so much more block? I'm not going to say it's worthless, though, so we're going to put it above rainbow, because I hate rainbow. <laughs> Lose two focus, gain strength, and gain one dexterity. This card. It's hella fun if you're doing something like uh, a dedicated non-focus, which as you can see here, all my opinions on focus is very important. But I'm not going to say I didn't have fun with using it. So it will be above channel. Alright, deal 7 damage to a random enemy twice. It's 1. There's so many better ways to do damage, but it's still better than dark. Nah, it's not better. It's that dark. Oh, man. This is great with a claw deck, but besides the claw deck, that's pretty much about it. You go and see. Seek! The best card in the entire game. You you get another one, in which I'll get to the Watcher, that has a very similar card to it. Probably even better than the Seek. 
but it it's the best card what else you put a card f from your draw pile into your hand exhaust it and the best part is is that it, when you buff it you can get two cards from your draw pile and that means you can get another seek and whatever card you want and if you have three of them who just the possibilities are limitless all right uh you get health it's one of the only ways he can heal himself without just going to risk site it's good but if i'm gonna do that i'm gonna have like two of them and if i don't want to use it for the turn i will use rebound but not as good as the four shield block all right draw three cards uh surprisingly i did not use that because it is draw engine so i'm not going to put it that bad down there but if i'm going to draw three i'm going to rely on drawing three and discarding all the bad cards or not having it and getting to play it for free or i'm going to use burnout and use it in anything and add a burn card into the discard pile <laughs> But it costs zero, and I can use all for one, for any deck entirely one, so there's that. Alright, and we got this. One of the best ways to gain block. Oh man, stack in a pinch. Best way to gain block in a pinch. But still not good as buffer because that prevents you from losing HP, period. <laughs> oh man, but if you have a big deck, you're talking about big bulk. Alright. Let's see. Whenever you receive unblock attack and channel lightning. The problem with this character is that it doesn't want to get attacked much. And it already gets plenty of energy and other resources to get that energy. Why do I want to be attacked? And it's not like getting attacked and then blocking the attack. No, you have to get attacked to get thunder. But I'm not going to say it's all the bad because Thunder, Thunder is awesome. Alright, free block. It's zero card. It goes into the B tier with all the other zero cards. Whenever you play a power card, Channel Lightning. Oh, yes. Hmm. I wonder. wonder how good this card's going to be when I have a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, a eight. Eight cards in the S tier using power cards. I wonder if that's going to be good for channeling lightning. And the answer is yes. Yes, it is. DL15 reduced the cost of this combat. This is always a good pocket card. I would say it's pretty good damage for what it does. And I, even with it costing two, I will gladly use two instead of revoking one of my orbs. Basic. Deal 24 if the enemy is dead, you get 3 and makes it free. <clears throat> I've actually upgraded it and it makes it 2, so not bad. Tempest, uh, best. I'll say it's better than Storm. You can add Tempest into your deck, you're most likely going to run double energy for it. No matter what, you're going to have this as lightning and you know what? If we're running a lightning deck, it deserves to be up here. But double energy can be used for anything as well. So there we go. Uh, and you got block. Okay, there we go. I think that's better. But all for one, you have to have zero cards. All right, there we go. That makes way more sense. All right. Uh, yeah, anyways. Uh, Tempest and St Tempest, obviously. You get a bunch of energy and then you smack the ever- living thunder out of your opponent all right <clears throat> deal six damage to all enemies uh make sure the mic is on and not glitched all right we're good deal six damage to all enemies draw a card i actually had a problem with this card if you are running the uh what it's called gain focus is fine but as you can see here most of the time you're going to be running power cards I do not know why you would want to focus on getting your strength up and damage. You do draw in six damage, but yeah, you're you have so many cards that give you other things than that. And so many other ways to make it just free damage too. Why pick that one? 
Deal 7 damage to a random enemy for each lightning. Channel this card. The thing with this card is that look how many lightning things we got here. The problem is, is that it costs 3. Deal 7 damage to a random enemy for each lightning this combat. So basically this combat you can do 3, which I think you can make it like 10 if you gain some focus or something. No, no, it's not. Yes, it is summoning a lightning. Okay. I'm not going to say it's garbage, but I'm not going to say it's better than those. Like, look at that. Look how good that is. Lightning now hits all opponents. Tempest gives you the ability to smack your opponent. And then you got Storm, that every time you play a power card, you get more lightning that does more damage to all your enemies that channel lightning. And you already had focus, and then you gain focus, and then you keep damage, and then you do orb slots, and then you do loop to do more damage. And you all did all that in one turn because you did seek and burn and focus and blah, 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 blah. There we go. And then obviously, this one actually goes the same with the, uh, I would actually put that higher, yeah. You get a rebound it, make it zero. You can do it all for one if you uh, made it zero. It's awesome. Turbo! Turbo buddy. Does anybody remember that movie? Turbo, the snail from Turbo. The snail from Turbo that's named Turbo. Well, imagine that. But you put a void card in your deck that you don't really care about because you're seeking your card anyways. So you use Turbo... You have two of them in your deck. You use all for one. You seek for all for one again. Or you can do so many different things. You can use the hologram to get all for one again. There's so many opportunities. These, This is so great. All of these. At the end, random power. You know how I feel about random cards. It's just too high maintenance. Alright. This is my deck or my tier list for these. I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty satisfied with this. Yeah. A lot less attacking cards up above and a lot of powers. Powers are broken on this guy. Anyways. <clears throat> that was for Slay the Spire Defect Tier List. Alright. So, we got the Seek, obviously, and all these. All these. All these. And all these. Alright. You had your look. There we go. That's my tier list. Satisfied. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Ah, <sighs> the Watcher. I'm actually probably going to have a lot of cards I dislike from the Watcher. But here we go. Wow, I love how Alpha is the first card. Ah, uh, Alpha, my favorite card. I'll uh, talk about it at the end here, but it, it's good. It's brokenly good. At the start of each turn, add a smite into your hand. I'm going to put it in B because the time that I used it, I've actually ruined my hand because I couldn't draw anymore afterwards. I had so many smite cards in my hand, I had more to do with. Enter the divine die next turn. I've actually killed myself with this card. So, but... I've actually killed myself with this card. <laughs> Deal 7 damage for each enemy in combat. Uh, this is really good for those multiple ones. In fact, the slime means nothing to you when you have the bowling ball. It's fun to play around with. <clears throat> um, but the only way you're going to really put that off is in Wrath. So... Deal 7, deal of damage equal to the mantra you have. <clears throat> Again, I think I messed it up, but it's a good mess up. You, it's hard to mess up with mantra. Deal 6, add smite, another card that adds smite. <clears throat> it's like in the mid midway point of like, oh, yep, yeah, it's fine. Uh, put a miracle into your hand at the start of your turn next time X. This got me the ability to use way more uh, other cards. 
because I had so many in my hand. So many miracles give you more energy. It's all. Awesome. Deal 12, end your turn. I've probably ruined some of my own runs by doing this. So I'll put it even worse than bowling ball at times. Ah, nah, nah, it's better than bowling ball. Shuffle and this thing into your draw file exhaust. I don't think I have a, a, enough knowledge of using that. Still better than this, even though I haven't used it. I killed myself. What more do you want from me? I killed myself with a card. Why do I need to do anything with that? Deal five to all enemies. It costs zero. I'll put it actually way better than the smite stuff. <clears throat> Into wrath. You retain it. With a character that loves to enter wrath and other things, it's it's cool. Uh, Scar. Scar is an ability where you can see the future, basically, where you can oh, look, two cards. Do I want to discard this card, or do I not? Anyways. I'll say it's better, but not as good as smite cards. <clears throat> actually, I'm actually dissing that thing a little bit too hard. Seeing the future is pretty cool. Gain four block, add a safety into your hand. <clears throat> safety is like a 12 block card. It's not bad, not bad at all. So we'll put it in C. Gain block, it's basic. Unplayable, when you draw this card, gain, mm, yes, just yes. Good, good card, gets your mana. At the start of your turn, gain energy and increase the gain by one. It's really hard to set up, but when you do, it's fun. Gain Mantra. It only costs one, and it gains two Mantra. And Mantra, you gain energy, you get triple the damage of all your attacks, and if you do it right, you can exit it out and do a bunch of other just stuff. It's good. It's probably better than Retain into Wrath. Exit your status. I would say it's better than even, like, oh, you get a bunch of them. Still not as good as that, but still. Uh, when you exit your status, like, let's say you're in Wrath and you need to exit quickly, it's very good to exit it. Same thing with this. Both of these cards are really good. They can be intertwined or interchanged. Good. Draw two, exit your status. Again, exiting your status is very good and useful. Enter Wrath. Yes, you want to enter Wrath once in a while. Whenever a card is retained, reduce its cost by one this combat. I will say it's good, just not God tier because you have to retain. And I don't see a lot of cards that you can retain here at the moment. You can only retain one, and that's already ready one, and that's not as important when you have something like miracles and getting way more energy than you should. Gain six block, shuffle and ignite into your drop file. Ignite. I think that's good, but it, my memory's like, nope, I don't know what that is. Gain three strength, gain three dexterity, gain less at the start of each turn. No, thank you. It costs two just to do that. And gaining strength, you're, you're telling me you want me to attack. Do you see what I like playing? I like exi exiting and getting energy and other stuff. Hmm. Yeah, it's a gambit attack that I don't like using, but I'll put it higher than that. All right. Deal eight damage. If the enemy intends to attack, intercom. This is, oh wait, I would actually say this is better than the inter wrath ones because inter wrath, you misclick that and you're done. All right, <clears throat> this card, every time you switch, you get more damage. And it's very good synergy with this. I'm kind of debating. You can probably switch any of these out and be good. Retain, it only costs one again. Oh, man, I'm really thinking with all the retain cards, they are only one <laughs> that you actually need, which is crazy. Deal four twice, all right. Deal seven, if this last card played, this combat was an attack gain. Yeah, follow up, you gain energy, and if you're following up, you're going to do this, change status, do a bunch of stuff, you're getting free energy, that's decent. <clears throat> 
choose one of uh, three attacks again a random nonsense thing at the start of your turn scar three uh there's already like scar two and you draw one so you already get a draw that's really good to have unlike this one where you just oh, at the start use scar wait what one energy one energy why, why don't i just do this and have all the above but yeah, for three turns you get it instead. Game three, uh, this with Wrath and all the other stuff I was talking about, you can gain a lot of block really quickly. If you are in Wrath, apply Vulnerable. Yep, again, being in Wrath is awesome. You can do so much with that. Intercom, draw three, otherwise Intercom. Again, another card that gives you the ability to enter a status effect or stance judgment just for the fun of it ah oh, this was one of my favorite cards to use period if they're at 30 you judge them gone poof all right this one was a fun card to use it's basically the same i would put these tiers very similar to each other Gain two block, you gain a deal three damage, but you scar only once instead of twice, and you. Ah, do you draw? No. Still. Deal 10, if fatal, upgrade a random card in your deck. This was hard to use, it took two energies, it exhausts itself, and it only does 10 damage. It's basically a feed, but upgrades the card instead. At the start of your turn. You know what? I didn't put feed that harshly down there. <clears throat> At the start of your turn, it if you are in calm, gain five block. Again, another decent way of gaining block, just like this way, but it's a power instead. Whenever a card is created during card upgrade, it if you are like me and love creating cards, playing this will create cards for you or, or create better of uh, versions of that card and just make more damage and ah oh, so good put a card from your discard pile into your hand and retain it enter calm and end your turn the problem with this card is that you end your turn it could be the decent uh, way of ending your turn again i do not like those cards though whenever you charge your stance game block well uh, i wonder what we're doing a lot at Hmm. Gaining block. Give me. Sign me up. Whenever you scar, gain block. Ah, pretty equal tier. If you're gonna add ability to gain block, I would. I, I would say that's good. I didn't use it a lot. And here's one of the best cards in the game. I would say it's even better than the alpha. Choose a card in your draw pile. Play the chosen card twice and exhaust it. Upgrading this card will make it three instead where it's where it's a lot easier to play If you have three of these upgraded cards in your deck You can play two cards twice and make alpha into beta into Omega and Play it all in one turn and that's how I beat the heart in three turns I believe three or four Either way, I won really quickly on one of the hardest bosses just by this cheeky deck, and it was hilariously fun. Man, talk about awesome. All right, retain, gain. See, another card that's retained, but it's just one energy. If it was reduced cost, uh, it's cost by one this combat. Should be fine, but anyways, uh, that's not about this. I was talking about that card instead of this. Retain, gain five log. When it retained, increase its block. Uh, this combat, yes, please. Just hold that card for an eternity. You'll have the best or a cool block card. <clears throat> gain three mantra shuffle and ignite into your draw pile. This is a good synergy with uh, the. Uh, mantra stuff but I still believe if I'm going to use anything that's mantra based I hope I have a bunch of power mantra stuff <clears throat> apply mark all enemies HP equal to their mark what you apply one mark and then you lose one HP of their mark 
I hope there's a bunch of other cars that are gonna apply more mark and then that mark. Mark. Hey, hey, Mark. <laughs> but it's better than bowling ball. Okay, gain two mantra, gain four block. Yeah, this is very good synergy with this if we're talking about mantra stuff. <clears throat> now we're talking. Now we're seeing why that's useful. Is if you have retain 12 block because you can make it cost zero in, in a couple of turns later. <clears throat> Deal 5 damage to a random enemy 5 times. Hmm. Deal 5 damage to a random enemy 5 times. Hmm. Yep. What? Doing 25 damage for 3 energy? Hmm. <clears throat> it's better than that, but if we have cards like Alpha exist, why? Why? That's why. Ragnarok, just go away. Uh, deal eight. Shuffle a uh, violence into your draw pile. I forgot what that was. That's still going to be better than that. Whenever you enter wrath, draw two. Yes, please. We're going to be switching and enter wrath and intercom a lot. Gain six. If the last card played, this card with a skill, draw two. What? Gain six. If the last card. Oh yeah, more draw engine. Give it to daddy. Yes, please. <clears throat> Retain! Now this, this is why you would want to play this. I'll still put in C because you have to rely on doing this. <clears throat> you retain it. You reduce the cost of this per combat. If you do this by two turns, it costs zero and it's awesome. Also, there's another card around here. If you retain, I bet you get strength or something. Deal 8 damage. If the last card played this combat was an attack, apply weak. It's only applying one weak, unfortunately. Unlike two, and I forgot if you upgrade, I think you only do a little bit more damage instead of applying two weak. But I'm most likely wrong. Drawing cards until you are full. What do you even mean? That sounds awesome! I love drawing a million different cards, but not as much as judgment can <coughs> only be played if this is the only attack in your hand deals 30 well only attack in my hand right only can be laid only attack it was decent I put it in B nah 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 I put it above B there we go there we go at the start of your next turn into wrath and draw two Yep, another changing stat ability. Good stuff. Gain three block for each card in your hand. Well, with all the stat changing stuff, I don't believe, and there's so many different other legendary cards that are way better to get than that. Another basic strike. All right. <clears throat> At this end of your turn, shuffle and a knight into your draw pile. Ah, uh, trying to remember what a knight was. It's uh, not miracle, that's for sure. <clears throat> My bad on that. That's a forgettable card at the moment. Oh, it's like draw two, maybe. I used it, but I didn't win with it to my knowledge. Gain eight block. The next tech you play costs zero. Looking at all the attack cards, barely anything costs more than like two when it comes to attacks so yeah yeah and it cost two to do that so now this was fun I'll put this here deal five damage whenever you attack gain two block exhaust deal three damage enter what well, this is a mouthful but deal three damage three times into wrath shuffle the card into your draw file <laughs> Uh, definitely an A card. Uh, gain three, seven block. You belong in the scar pile with all the other nonsense. <clears throat> Retain intercom. Yeah, see a pattern here? I really like switching my stats consistently. All right. I liked this. I like skipping a turn. This was fun. I would even say better than judgment. You get a free turn. Intercom. 
good basic card to get. Deal 9, game block equal to unblock damage. If you got like a bunch of strength, that can be really fun. So I'll put it even higher than my hand. Whenever you game block, apply one weak to all enemies. If weak was like lose strength instead, I think I would enjoy that card a lot more, but that's not the case. Whenever you scar, this is basically <clears throat> uh, the stat changing one, but less frequent because scarring is a very limited amount of cards that do scarring, it seems. Deal 15 damage, draw 2. She has a card that can literally get whatever card she wants. Why would I want to even care about draw engine? When there's a card like this, draw until your hand is full, or uh, <clears throat> draw to exit the stat, etc. Why do I need to do 15 damage when there's so much more? Retain, deal 7 damage when retained, increase the damage for this combat. This card, retained, can go astronomically different damage, especially if you have mantra. Retain? Four damage. So let's say after after five turns, five times four twenty. It does twenty seven damage, plus triple that. Triple twenty seven damage. My head doing math. I think that's eighty one. Ugh. Uh, twenty seven. Seven, that's 21. 81, was it? Triple. So that's 60. And then 7 times that, that's 21. Alright, yeah, 81 damage. 81 damage. And if you comboed with this, if you ran a set like that, ah, uh, yes, it's free. It's zero. I don't know why you would uh, do that, because it already costs one energy for it, and in most of the other things that only cost one energy, and you don't have a problem with the energy. This was really fun to do. Wish. Wow. With this character, I like energy, but I'll put it here. Choose one plated. Or you can gain strength or gold. Plated armor and gold were fun to use. I didn't use strength much with this character. But hey, plated armor. Nice. Gain five mantra. I actually am debating in my head which one's better. I can gain five mitra now, or wait three turns. I think worship is better than that. All right, and the attack bonus. I'll put it directly in B. It was fun to do five additional damage, but when you're doing 200 damage for each turn because you got alpha and you have got alpha again, beta, beta, mega, mega, omega, ugh. And you got to play the, all of them in one turn because you got Miracle or uh, use this to get more energy. What more do you want? <laughs> what more do you want? Man. Well, I think that's my tier list on this. <laughs> I think I did every character, didn't I? Alright. Uh, let's uh, do this. So, there's... Uh, Slay the Spire, Watcher, Tier List, there we go, that's what the Tier List is, here's the rankings. If only that was better, in my eyes. Don't get me wrong, I probably used it, but man, three energies one turn was really hard to use, unlike three turns, uh, three energy for this one, and then get to pick whatever I wanted and played it. You get to play it. Alright, anyways. You get to play two, in fact. You don't, it, it can be as, as it can be 100,000 energy and it wouldn't matter because you get to play it with that card. Man, so good. Anyways, I was, okay, I'll, I'll do one more. I, I got on a rant. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go, that was my tier list on the cards. All right, Whew. man, I did it. I did everything on Slay the Spire. Sides, what? Enemies, maybe? I'm thinking I'm good. I did the bosses. I did the character selection. 
There's nothing really else here. It was a blast. All right. Uh, man, there was this in the way. My bad. Hopefully it wasn't too bad text-wise, but rip. Uh, hopefully you got to see my tier list a little bit. Nope, nope, nope. I felt like that was bad. All right, here's my tier list. Slay the Spire Watcher tier list maker. Here's the Watcher. Here's the Watcher cards. I did not realize there was text here. All right, here's the bosses. Here's the Slay the Spire bosses, in my opinion. Hmm. And here's the Iron Clad, or the Iron Chad, as I call them. There we go. Here's the silence tier list. Boop. And here is Slay the Spire's defect tier list. So sorry about the text on the top that was the problem. Man, you couldn't see the letters clearly. That's really unfortunate, it is, isn't it? Alright, there we go. Okay. Well, uh, I'll probably post this to the Discord or something. It was good. Uh, probably going to make more tier lists in the future. We'll definitely see. Definitely a Smash Brothers one eventually. Peace.